When I import data from a CSV file into Power BI, I often encounter two problems. The first problem is that sometimes my decimals disappear and I have way too big values in my result. Now, the second problem that I sometimes have is that I add columns to my data source file, the CSV file, and then I refresh and they don't show up in Power BI. Now, let's see how we can fix both of them. Welcome to How to Power BI. My name is Bas, and if this is the very first time for you visiting this channel, then make sure to hit that subscribe button if you want to stay up to date on all of my videos. Now, let's have a look at the CSV files that we're going to import into Power BI. So here you have the data from two CSV files that we are going to import into Power BI, and they're almost the same. The only difference is the decimal separator and the thousand separator. So you see in the first data set, we have the dots as a decimal separator and comma as a thousand separator. In the second data set, we have it the other way around. Okay, now let's go to Power BI and import the data from these two CSV files. So go to get data and then text CSV, choose the first one, and then I leave everything as it is. I'm just gonna click on transform data and then I do it one more time for the other one. So new source, text CSV, and over here, this is the other one. And also here, leave everything as it is and just click on okay. So now that we have both data sets inside of Power BI, let's compare the two with each other. So for the first one, we had commas as a decimal separator. And you see, everything seems to be working fine. So we have first the source tab, then we promoted the headers, and then you see over here we have commas. Now we are going to change the data type and boom, it works. Now then for the other one, we had dots as the decimal separator. So source tab, promoted the headers, and then now we're going to change the data type and <laughs> it just doesn't work. Now, why did it work for the first data set where you had the commas and not for the second one? Well, that has to do with your regional settings. So by default, Power BI picks it up from the regional settings in Windows. You can just look for regional and format, and then here you see for me, that's English Europe. Now, and in this format, the decimal separator is comma, and therefore it applied the right data type using the comma decimal separator. But it didn't work for that second data set where you had the dot as a decimal separator. So what can I do then? Well, we can also change the regional settings for the whole workbook. To do that, you can go to file, and then options, settings, options, and then you go to regional settings under current file, and then from here, we have a drop down, and we can change the regional settings to a region which uses the dot as a decimal separator. And then it would work for the second data set, but not for the first one. Okay, so let's give this a try. So I'm going to go and choose here English UK. Press on OK. And now I'm going to go to the data set where we have the dots as a decimal separator. I'm going to delete the change type step. Then I'm gonna redo that and I'm gonna assign the data type decimal number. And you see, now it works. However, if I would have commas now, the other way around, well, then it wouldn't work. And what if you have some queries where you have a dot as a decimal separator and other queries where there is the comma as a decimal separator? Well, then you have to go to your column and then assign a data type using a certain locale. Okay, so using locale, and we need to choose a locale that uses the comma here as a decimal separator, for example, Germany. Click on OK, you see it works. Now let's have a look at the formula that got generated for the last step. Now you see it uses a function table that transform column types, and basically it's the normal function that's being used when you change the data types, but there is an optional argument that was added over here at the end, DE, DE for Germany. Okay, so this is basically the only thing that needs to be added to change the data type using a certain locale. Now we can make this more dynamic. If you don't know what the decimal separators are gonna be for the CSV files that you're connecting to, then you can do the following. You can go one step before changing the data types, and then you insert a new step, and we can look into the sales column. So over here, just type in sales in between square brackets, okay? And we're going to have a look at the first value that we find 
in this list. Okay, so for this, we can use the curly brackets, type in zero to get the first value. There you go. So now we can use a function that's called text.positionof, and we want to check the value, and so that's already there. And then we want to look for a comma. Now we can duplicate this, so just copy it, and we can check if this is bigger than, and then we just paste it in there again, and we place the comma with a dot. Now if this is true, that must mean that we have the comma as a decimal separator. So let's rename that step, and I'm gonna call this one comma, question mark. Then I go to the very last step, Okay, now here we have to just update the reference to comma and instead we want to refer to the promoted header step. And now we can go to that very last argument and we can say if there's a comma, so I can just refer to the comma step, then I want to have the else, there's a, period, there's a dot as the decimal separator. So we could use a locale like the UK. And if I then switch the data source, which currently is using commas, to something that's using uh, dots as a decimal separator, then you see for the comma step, now this one returns false. And for the very last step, it now applies the data type using the UK format. Okay, now let's talk about the second problem that I often have, and that is new columns that get added to the CSV files. Now, here in our CSV file, I'm gonna add one extra column for the cost. And then let's save the file and go back to Power BI. I'm gonna click on refresh. I see nothing happens. Now what's going on is the following. So if you go back to the source tab and you have a closer look at the formula, you see there's one argument that defines the number of columns. And actually, this is an optional argument. We can take it out. So I'm just gonna take it out. Delete it, press enter, and now you see the cost column shows up. I'm gonna click on the very last step and it's solved. So that was the easy fix. And now you might be wondering, does all of this also work when you have CSV files that are in a folder and then you're going to connect to that folder and combine the data from all of the CSV files? Yes, it's more or less the same. Now let me show you. I'm gonna go here to new source again, and then I go to more, connect to a folder, then click on OK, transform data, and then here we can click on combine files in the content column header, and I leave everything as this, just click on OK. Now we have here the combined data sets of two CSV files, but you see the sales column still has the wrong data type assigned, so we have to fix that, so we can redo the last step, and so I'll just go one step back, over here select the sales column, and then choose to assign a data type using a certain locale. Here we have a decimal number, and then I choose a locale that has a comma as a decimal separator. So in Germany, and click OK. And you see, that fixes it. Okay, so that's it about the data types. What about the new columns that are added to the CSV files that are in the folder? Well, for this, we have to go to the folder that's called transform file from data. Okay, so let's go there. And then you go to the function transform file. And then let's have a look at the formula. Also here you see columns equals two, which you can just take out. And then you can also go to transform sample file and then to the source tab. And then also here, just take out columns equals two. And if you then have new columns and you refresh, then you see that the cost information nicely flows into Power BI. And this is how you can solve two common problems that a lot of people have when they connect to CSV files using Power BI. Now, if you have any other problems, then just share them with me in the comment section below. And don't forget to subscribe if you wanna stay up to date on all of my videos, and I hope to see you in the next video.